My mother-in-law took my passport and set it on fire. The passport burned fast and eventually turned into ashes. Now you can't go on vacation to Saint Bird's Island. What? Why? You are a stranger, so you'll be staying here. Too bad. I guess they had planned this all along. My mother-in-law and husband are grinning at me. I was absolutely mortified at the despicable way they were doing it. Well, well, well. I knew they were planning something stupid. I had thought about it just in case. But I have never imagined that they would be so sneaky. They looked at me with triumph, gave me a sickening giggle. Then I told them the truth. My name is Tyra, 29 years old. I studied linguistics at the university. After graduating, I have been expanding my knowledge of the world's languages and cultures, and sharing it with the world. The organization I belong to sends me abroad to do various activities. Once I'm sent abroad, I don't come back for a few months. When I first started this job, I honestly thought the marriage was out of the question for me. But when I returned to my home country at the age of 26, I met Corey, who later became my husband. I would only see him for a few months at a time, as my job required me to travel back and forth from one place to another. Once I'm assigned, I wouldn't see him again for a few months. In the meantime, we continued to exchange phone calls and emails. Two years passed in this way, and when I was 28 years old, we got married. A year after we got married. I still spend half of the year abroad, so my husband and I are still separated. I am grateful to him for choosing me to marry me. I am on my way home from the airport right now. Today is the first time I can see my husband in five months. I should be tired, but my steps back home are light. My walking speed gets faster. When I arrived. My husband wasn't home yet, so I started cleaning up the mess. I always tell him to keep the room clean, but it's quite messy here. Normally, this would be the cause of a fight, but today I can forgive him. After all, I'm going to see him for the first time in five months. I am in the middle of cooking when I hear the front door open and my husband comes out in the living room. I rush over to him. Corey, welcome home. Good to see you, Han. Oh, hey, Tyra, you're home. This is supposed to be today. What? Is that all you can say? We haven't seen each other for five months. All right, but we've been living like this for a long time, so I'm used to it. What? Can you at least say you missed me or something? Right, right. I'm tired. Anyway, is dinner ready? Yeah, just finished cooking it. Let's eat. Eating with my husband for the first time in month is the most delicious meal in the world. Normally, I would be satisfied with that, but this day I felt a little different. Hey, Corey. Why do you keep looking at your phone? What? What? What's wrong with that? Nothing is wrong, but I'm finally home. You know, you've been looking at your phone, and you haven't talked to me at all. We've been communicating by phone and emails all this time, haven't we? There's nothing new to talk about now. That may be true, but. It's been a long time since we've seen each other like this. So why? I'm so angry at my husband's attitude that my tone of voice is getting stronger. It seems like that comment triggered my husband's anger. He stood up, put his phone on the table, and glared at me. You know what? 
You were just on a plane, but I'm tired from work. Get it? Whoa! Wait a minute! I jumped on the plane right after work too, and you talk to me like that? I didn't ask you to do that. You just rushed home on your own. What? You don't have to say it like that. I missed you, you know. I'm just saying I didn't ask you to come home. If you're going to be like that, don't come back at all. You're annoying, Tyra. He slammed the table and got up with a bang. He left the living room without even touching his dinner. What's the matter with him? Why did he talk to me so coldly? I haven't seen him for a long time. Was I the only one who was happy to see him? What's the point of rushing home? Tears streamed down on my cheeks and dripped onto the table. The reunion with my husband had turned out to be even more sad than I had imagined. The next day, his attitude did not change. When I said good morning to him, as soon as we saw each other, he gave me a cold stare. I envy you, you know. You can just laze around at home all the time. While you were over here, no, that's not true. I have a lot of work to do, actually, like summarizing our activities and looking over materials for the next training session. There's a lot to do, more than you know. Either way, it's something you can do at home. I'm really jealous. You get to spend half the year like that. I wish I had a cushy job like that. Hey, you don't have to put it like that. Well, I'm just a company man, so I gotta go to work. You relax here, princess. What the hell? Hey, Corey! Ignoring me, my husband left the house. We had a few fights before our marriage. My husband had never been this sarcastic to me. But this was the first time I was so confused by his words and actions. I wondered if my husband's words were holding me back. I was thinking myself if there was anything I could do to help the situation. While I was reading work-related materials, I decided to clean the house. As I was vacuuming the room and changing the beddings, my phone rang with an incoming call. I checked the screen. And there was my mother-in-law's name. With a bad feeling, I answered the call. "Hello, Tyra here. Long time no see, Tyra. I heard you're back. I heard you came home yesterday. Yes. And I heard you said something bad to Corey. He was quite angry. I'm sorry, but it's nothing that would bother you, you know. Well, listen." I've been thinking, since you are here, why don't we go on a trip with the whole family? What? I couldn't help but let out an unexpected sound. Without my response, my mother-in-law continued. Actually, I was just talking with my husband about going to Saint Bird's Island, and then Corey started saying he wanted to go with us. What? That's so, Tyra. You used to go in abroad, right? I wonder if you could help us with hotel reservations and stuff. Me? Or maybe you can't hear what your mother-in-law is asking you to do. I feel my mother-in-law's voice getting colder. She doesn't really want to travel with me. I know that. She just thinks. It would be more convenient for her, since I'm used to traveling abroad. I knew my mother-in-law did not think well of me, because she had been sarcastic toward me ever since we first met at the wedding reception. It's been a year since we got married, and it's still the same. I often received messages from my mother-in-law while I was working abroad. How can you be a wife and be away from home for months at a time? 
If you don't take care of the house, I'd rather have my son marry another woman. It was a mistake to allow him to marry a woman like you. That's what my mother-in-law used to text me. So I didn't have a good feeling when I got the call. But I never thought I would be taken advantage of for a family vacation. However, maybe it is better than being verbally abused as usual. I was angry at myself for not being able to say no, even though I knew I was being taken advantage of. A few hours later, my husband came home from work and was in a better mood than he was in this morning. He threw his briefcase on a sofa, and with a big smile on his face, he calls out to me, "Mom called you, didn't she? We can take you on a trip to Saint Bert's." Yeah, I heard. But you know, what? You're not thinking of turning it down, are you? Mom asked you to come with us. I know, but why don't you just go with your mom and dad? Like you originally planned. As soon as I said that, my husband's eye changed. He clicked his tongue and his attitude changed to one of intimidation. You, you need to learn to read between the lines. The only time you be of any use to us is when we go abroad. You don't have to talk like that. It's true, isn't it? Anyway. You book all the flights and accommodations, and as you probably know, everything should be under my name. What, Corey? You are going to pay for the whole trip? What are you talking about? You and I will split it fifty-fifty. It's a small price to pay to show some respect to our parents. What is that? If you've got time to laze around at home, make a reservation now. No, this is wrong. I don't want to. What are you mumbling about? My husband took a beer out of the fridge and drank it down in one gulp. I have so many things on my mind, but I don't know what kind of repercussions I will receive it if I rebel. I felt ashamed, but I had no choice but to do as my husband and mother-in-law told me to do. I made all the arrangements for the flights. And accommodations for the trip to Saint Bart's, just as my husband had told me to do. On the day of the trip, I was going to pick them up at my parents-in-law's house and go straight to the airport. And just a few days before our trip to Saint Bart's, I couldn't sleep, and when I woke up in the middle of the night, my husband, who was supposed to be next to me, was not there. I went to the living room. And heard his voice. Apparently, he was on the phone with someone. Oh, it's okay. It's all okay, Mom. I'll be there first thing in the morning as planned. Mom, please do the passport thing anyway. Seriously, I am looking forward to it. I'll make sure to introduce her to you when I get back. I felt a little stuck on some of the things he said. Passport? Introducing her? He said, "Mom." So I'm pretty sure it was my mother-in-law on the other end of the phone. There's definitely something going on between my husband and my mother-in-law. In the first place, it didn't feel right for him to ask me to go on a trip with him. What would they do to me if I went to my parents-in-law's house? I don't know all the details. But at this point, there's no other way to be sure. I decided to take the utmost precaution until the day of the trip.、And、then came the day of our trip to Saint Bart's. I got into the car with the carry-on case and my handbag that my husband had asked me to prepare. I packed my husband's personal belongings in the handbag, and he and I headed for my in-laws house. Our trip to Saint Bart's. Was about to begin. Whatever is in store for me, I have to take it. I walked into my in-laws' house with my husband, determined to make the most of the trip. 
We were greeted by no one other than my mother-in-law. Oh, hi, Tyra. You're here.、Uh, hi. It's been a while. Good to see you. We're almost ready. I'm going to grab a few things for the trip, so you will have to wait a little longer. Okay. Take your time. Oh, and Tyra, could you bring the carry-on case from the other room? It's heavy, so please do it with Corey. Okay? Okay. Got it. I did not miss that moment. My husband and mother-in-law exchanged eye contact. My passport was in my pocket, just in case. At my husband's urging, I carried her carry-on case and went into the living room again. And there was my mother-in-law with a smirk and a weary smile on her face. She seemed to have the passport in her hand. She's holding the passport. And flattered it, grinning. Now, you can't go on a trip to Saint Bert's. What do you mean? I'm going to burn this passport right now. What did you just say? I was only using you for the trip arrangements in the first place. What the hell are you doing? You are a stranger, so you'll be staying here. Too bad. My mother-in-law went to the kitchen and lit the passport on fire with a lighter. The passport started to burn from the corner. Eventually, it ended up with black ashes in the sink. When my mother-in-law saw that the passport was completely burned, she said to me, "We did it!" And my husband jumped up and down with joy. Yeah, mom, we made it. Now, it's just the three of us on this trip. We'll be able to meet Corey's new girlfriend when we get back, right? Yeah, I've already arranged that. We don't need this useless woman anymore. That's my son. You know when something is not working. He took his cell phone out of his pocket. Showed me some pictures. Seems like they were the pictures of him and the woman he had been having an affair with. He looked down at me with a triumphant look on his face and said, "I am not divorcing you for the sake of my reputation, but you're staying here during our trip. When we come back, I'll move in with her, and you can go away." Taking my husband's line as a cue. My mother-in-law began to laugh vulgarly. The look on their faces was nothing but evil. At the moment, I knew for sure that I didn't deserve to be a part of a family with these people any longer. I grinned and said to them, "By the way, whose passport is that?" "Huh? What are you talking about? Of course, it's yours." I took it out of your handbag, so it's your passport. <laughs> I am so sorry. My passport is right here. What? Why? It can't be. I took my passport out of my pocket and flashed it in front of her. My mother-in-law saw this and opened her mouth as if in a panic. That's not possible. No, this is my passport for real. See, my mother-in-law must have sneaked into my handbag and assumed that the one passport in it was mine. How could she burn it without checking it, even though she was planning to do something evil? Wait, whose passport did I burn then? I guess it was my husband's passport that was in there. So. This means that it was your son's passport that you burned earlier. Unfortunately, at these words, my mother-in-law turned pale and started shaking. My husband started to blame her mercilessly. Hey, mom, what have you done? I told you to be careful. 
I only found one passport in her handbag. You would think it would belong to her. I don't give a shit. You didn't check. That's why this happened. You're saying it's my fault? If you had checked from the beginning, I wouldn't have made this mistake. What the hell? The next thing I knew, they were blaming each other. I was beyond angry and disgusted at the sight of them. Hey, Tyra, do something! My husband started yelling at me, but I was not to be outdone. Seriously? Where do you come off telling me what to do? You cheated on me behind my back. How dare you? You and your mother are both disgusting human beings. Hey, who do you think you're talking to, Tyra? I'm talking to you and your stupid mother. You don't think I'm gonna let you get away with this, do you? I'm telling you, you're going to pay me back exactly what you owe me. I'll make sure you pay for the affair and all the abusive words your mother gave to me. So be prepared. Then my father-in-law came down from upstairs. What's going on? What are you doing? When I told him everything, he was furious about what had happened. The trip was canceled, and my mother-in-law got a divorce. My husband was disowned by his father and never allowed to come home. I consulted a lawyer and divorced my husband. In addition, I demanded alimony from him and my ex-mother-in-law. They had to pay alimony in one lump sum. Corey also had to pay for the cancellation of our entire trip to St. Bart's. They are the type of people who don't make savings. Of course, there was no way they could pay the alimony in one lump sum. In the end, they managed to repay all the money by borrowing money. Now, my ex-husband lives with his mother, it seems like. I heard that they were just barely making ends meet. And my ex-husband was also dumped by the woman he had an affair with. I, on the other hand, have moved out with their alimony money. Now I rent a condo and enjoy living alone. Cheating and bullying. I went through a lot of hardships before. But now, I am free from all of it and enjoying my life. I want to continue to go to various countries and learn about their cultures. And I want to share it with the whole world. Thank you for watching till the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you like. See you in the next video.